You're listening to Family Today with Fumi Johnson. Welcome to Family Today with Fumi Johnson. It's another beautiful Friday morning. Somebody make some noise. <laughs> yes, I have two powerful guests here. Women, today is a very power packed day. It's really serious, you know. And we want to address a very important issue. I stumbled on this question asked by a tired woman. And I'm like, no, this is really, really important. I want us to look at it as women and as men. I'm going to be getting contributions from people that have been married for quite a while. And this is something that I think we want to look at. I want you as the audience to listen to these as well. And then we all can look at what really should happen. If we're not able to open the phone lines, can you send your comments by DM to the Fumi Johnson on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, threads, in whatever way you want to. You can share your opinion and tell us what should we do? What should this person do? Is it right for this person to be this way? But let me not preempt. Let me not judge. I want you to listen to this. I wonder how people who have been married for 30, 40 years do it. I am barely five years in and I am already tired of my husband. Sometimes I don't understand why I got married. I am tired of being called a married woman. I'm tired of having to cook for someone. I'm tired of having to look after someone. I'm even tired of my kids. I have to. There's just something about being married that gets me tired. I have stopped wearing my ring right from the third year. My husband keeps asking me why. It's not a him problem. It is actually a me problem. I am tired. He's a perfect man anybody would want to be honest. But I'm tired of being married. I'm tired of seeing his face in the morning. I'm tired of perceiving his stinky breaths when I wake up. I'm tired of thinking of what to cook for him every day. I am tired of going on school runs. I'm tired of worrying when he doesn't come home at his usual time from work. To be honest, I feel like I have fallen out of love with my husband. And I can't even tell why. It's not like I'm seeing any other person outside. It's not like anybody's enticing me. I just need a space. And please, let no one talk about vacation because it is not even a five days away that can fix this. I'm just tired. I don't love this man any longer. I am bored. My life is so boring. How do I go about it? Do I seek for a divorce? Do I tell him I'm no longer in love with him? What do I do? Help me. This is coming from a tired sister. Hmm. I told you I have two special women in the house today. I'm going to introduce the first person. She is a delectable young lady. She's a mother of two too, but I don't know whether she's tired or she's because this woman too has two children and she's tired. She runs an event outfit. She calls herself event style by Berry. She does so many great things. I know she exports made in Nigerian products. She rents out decoration things and she does so many things so her name is Buki Uviase can you please welcome her to the studio thank you so much thank you so much for having me it's a great uh, how long have you been here. married uh, Buki this year will make it 10 years Woo! that I've been married mm. <laughs> did you hear our tired wife yes I did oh. so what do you have to say are you tired no, I'm not tired. I think that, you know, it's important for you to deliberately enter into your marriage and know what you want from it. I think from how she spoke, it's something about how she started. You know, what's marriage in the first place? If you don't know the purpose of something, you're probably going to go into that thing and probably get tired, just like how she got tired. Because again, if you're going into marriage because you wanted to build nations right help your husband fulfill purpose even yourself as well you would find things to do to make sure that you get to that point you know what i'm trying to look at it this mm. she said she has two children mm. she's tired of school runs she's tired of seeing the children mm. she's tired of her husband's breath she's tired yeah so, so people what? think that when you have children mm. it's a good thing right so why why would she be tired so as i said i think it still boils down to the same thing i'm talking i think that the purpose for her getting married in the first place you know she probably didn't know it she probably just go married because let me everybody not, let me, let me not let married. you go too far <laughs> let me ask you know i told you there are two powerful ladies let me ask oh this other lady she has been on her program not once not twice not twice she's a woman of timber and caliber no right now is chat gpt and ai uh, cyber security because anything that is making money now that is the woman and name is a uh, christy and Fadipe, make a great welcome to 
Christy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Thank having you for me coming. once again. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you for so joining much. us today, and Always we're really excited. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes. Um, please, we want to know you because we're talking about a tired wife. How long have you been married, Christy? Twenty years now. Ah, your marriage is not with a teenager. <laughs> so I have someone who has been married to be ten years this year, another one. 20 years this woman had been married for five years when you heard what she was asking or what she was saying what did you think what struck you first well it's natural to at times get tired we get tired of school mm. sometimes we get tired at work mm. and sometimes in reality we really do get tired of certain stages of our life so i would say almost like a natural phenomenon Sometimes you wake up, you just don't want to get out of bed. You're just tired of life. But the issue is, what do you do when you get tired? Are you then saying that this could be a mental health issue? It could be a combination of many things. Yes, too many things are dragging at her. She has to give herself to her children. So for a marriage that is less than five years or about five years, the children are very demanding. So it's at a demanding stage of our life. Children's demand, husband's demand. She sounds like almost a full-time housewife or someone that is working from home. So it's very exasperated, physically tiring, mentally tiring. And listening to her, I can imagine everything revolves around her family, planning meals. So she's doing literally everything and she's not receiving. So giving and giving and maybe not refreshing can be exasperated i mean yuki was saying something about purpose and i want to really understand what she was drawing us into could she be tired because she has lost her sense of purpose could it be that she doesn't even have a purpose could it be that she had a different agenda for the marriage and she's overwhelmed by what she discovered marriage to be you're an events planner and i know you spend most of the time planning weddings could that be a problem because i know a lot of people spend a whole year planning the color the theme the menu the dance the decor and everything and then maybe after spending that and possibly breaking the bank you know they now come in and feel oh god someone told me this whole thing is overrated the whole wedding thing is overrated. What are you saying? I want to know what you're talking about. All right, so I like what uh, Mrs. Christie said, you know, about uh, the stage of marriage that they are in, that it can actually get tiring, to be honest. You know, when you have a three-year-old, a five-year-old, four-year-old, that kind of a thing. So it's possible to have that thing try to drag you down because you just feel just stressed and all that. But what I was talking about was having a purpose. Of getting married you know like when you go for counseling or even you yourself before you get to the point okay i'm now 27 or i'm now 30 i want to get married why what's the reason you want to get married because your friends are all married you want to wear a designer dress on your wedding day you want to trend like one of my brides last you want weeks. to be the spotlight you want to, yeah so why why are you getting married you know if you get the why right then that why will drive you so even when your husband is annoying you you say i want to build a home where my kids are going to grow up and you know have confidence you know take on the world all that there are things that are driving you you know i want my husband to grow in what he's doing i want to be a great wife i want to see how i can contribute the best to society i want to bring up kids that you know are going to help society be better you have things that are driving you mm. that driving force would help you when you just feel this is just so much work. you think what well, can i go and learn a new course should i try something different you know you have the inner drive inside you pushing you to you know think through how you can help the situation not sit down and be depressed and just think this is the end uh, i know you spoke about something about mental health might be a bit of that in this because again when you didn't define what you're meant to go into like put that go abroad i just get depressed because that they just get to say i want to jack and not get abroad nobody's their friend people are racist you know towards them everything they just get depressed so you don't know what you're expecting and you just get there that might also push you to you know feel really bad and all that so i think that proposed thing wasn't very well defined and that's probably why she's having that issue that's just my oh, thought. thank you so thank much you. Buki. that is such a good angle you're bringing it from because if you don't know the purpose of a thing, I mean, Miles Moro said abuse is inevitable. So maybe our young ladies are going into marriage because it's the rave, because it's the next thing after graduation. 
you have graduated, you have done NYSE, you have gotten a job, what are you still waiting for? I hear a lot of parents, they will say to their children, who has no man come or if there is a man, where is the woman? And what we are looking at is ascendancy, you just move from one level to another and the next level is marriage without understanding the purpose of marriage. Oh, Christy, what do you have to say? We want to not just counsel this woman, we also want to look at other people. If you're listening, this is Family Today with Fumi Johnson, and uh, you can ask questions, we'll be willing to answer your questions. You can send it to our DM right away, and we want to help you. Because I believe that God wants to give a solution to everyone that is crying. He says, to come unto me, all those are weary and are heavy living and I will give you rest. He wants to hear you and don't judge yourself and don't condemn yourself because you feel tired. Don't let anyone also condemn you because it's natural, like Christy said, to feel tired sometimes, to feel overwhelmed. Another thing before I allow Christy to talk is sometimes in the marriage we feel is not equally weighted. We feel the responsibilities or the chores are tilted. When that happens, you feel that, wow, I'm doing 90% of the work. You're measuring vis-a-vis -vis what your husband's contribution is. That could also make it overwhelming. That could also make it um, tiring. We're going to address that. But let me allow Christy to talk. Thank you again, Christy. So I'm so happy this lady spoke out. Mm. That's the first and go to solution finding. So all the ladies, speak out. Speak out. Speak out. Ladies, speak out. Don't bottle it in. And we're ready to listen to you. Like I said, the Bible says a multitude of counsel, there is safety. So if you're overwhelmed in any way, if you're confused in any way, if you're tired in any way, don't be judged. Don't be condemned. Speak out. And I'm ready to listen to you. Like I said, follow me and ask the question. Okay, Christian. I like the fact that she spoke out. I like the fact also she didn't speak out to her husband because he may not understand. Sometimes husbands take that to be you're complaining about me. I am the fault. I am they the also say that it is better to live on the rooftop <laughs> than to stay in the house with a nagging woman. Hmm. So the husband would have felt, am I not doing enough? enough? Am I not trying for you? So she's gone the right direction, although she spoke to general public that may give her diverse advice. But speaking out is very good. So, like in everything, you need teachers, you need mentors, you need guidance. She has asked a question. How do those that are married for 30, 40 years do it? There are marriages you admire, my sister. I think you should zoom. That's the immediate thing on those people how have you done it mm. how have you managed the different phases life is in ev in phases for every phase there's a strategy the way you were married first year is not the same way when babies come things change there are disruptions at every stage of your marriage so this is school run period there's a disruption there's wow. a strategy that is needed you need a disruption in your life to change the monotonous setting it's monotonous you're bored and that's the truth and when you seem like someone that has been very active you're a creative person so those creative juices have to come out so there has to be a disruption how do we go about that disruption so first of all get a mentor somebody who you know you admire you love like mrs fumi johnson is someone you love and admire i think you should private chatter she can talk to you get books on how to stay married, happy, and active without losing your own self-identity. Okay, because okay. I see that I have, to, I have to stop you now. We're going to talk more. We're going to go on a short break now, and we continue this conversation after the short break. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Threads, TikTok, The Fumi Johnson, and then we will perform more solution and reasoning after the short break. Paul says it is better for a single man to marry than to burn. Are you single, married, widowed, separated or divorced? Join me on Family Today. Family Today with Fumi Johnson is one program that will bring you in alignment with who you truly are and open your mind to how you rock your significant interpersonal relationships while sidestepping the landmines, culture, religion and society have laid in your path. 
Family today with Phil Johnson goes where others are shy to go and shines the light in the dark corners others have forgotten. Tune in at 11.30 a.m. every Friday to listen to Family Today with Fumi Johnson on Inspiration 92.3 FM. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We are still trying to look at the story of this tired woman. And uh, one of the things Christy said was, you said those people that have been married for 30, I've been married this year, will be 32 years, 1992. Christy has been married for 20 years and she has been married this year is going to be 10 years so i think you have the right room to ask questions and to listen i think for now let all the tired women listen christy you were taking us on a road map and i like the way you were dissecting it that life is in phases and different phases require different strategy you know, let me tell you my experience when you have a baby for the first time, you yourself, you become a toddler. You start singing the song. You start tasting the food. You start sitting on the floor. You know, and if you are not sure or conscious that that is what the faith requires, it may make you feel that something is wrong with you. And then you have to sing the sing along. I also remember the time when my children were in primary school, I don't know if they still do that now, and one of them had to sit exams for 16 subjects. They still do something like that now? Yes, they do, they do. 16 subjects, moral instruction, then you would have a quantitative aptitude, verbal aptitude, and all those things. And when it's exam time, even though you have a lesson teacher, I had to read the notes for 16 subjects for three children. It was crazy. So what can you practically say to help somebody at this phase? You know, it's been a while since I was there. Maybe when you're done, Bookie will help us. Bookie is closer to that. Your last child is already in secondary school. As I've not entered secondary school yet. Two of my children are married. Oh, so that's good. <laughs> I've entered the grandma mode. So what do you have to say? You need a community she needs a community yes, you need a community and there's safety in that community a community that is objective that is loving you need to find your identity because sometimes our dreams get so subdued in marriage that we just feel empty and void so you have to first of all what would i have loved to do at this phase i cannot do it but I begin to prepare to do that as I move away from this phase. Because sometimes for the woman, you feel everything. My dreams are gone. All because of this marriage. So write them down. To get a community. A beautiful, safe community. Where you can talk. Where you can discuss. It could be in church. I don't know if she's in a church community or a school community. Actually, I got it online, so I don't even know where she's from. So, but but I felt burdened and I felt that if this issue is not addressed, this kind of thing, I've had cases of women that committed suicide. And people are wondering why would they commit suicide? You have a good home, so people think. You have children. People think that once you have children, that is a height of achievement in life. Uh, let me digress and say this to you. Nothing satisfies. If you're listening to me i want you to take that nothing satisfies some people think that marriage completes marriage does not complete the only one that completes us is god the bible says you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers and one of the reasons we get stranded and we get confused and we burn out is because we had hoped that a particular relationship will give us the fulfillment that we want. It leads to idolatry. I also know women and men that have put all their hope in their spouses and they get frustrated. If anything happens to that man or that woman, then your life gets halted. You can't do that. You cannot put your hope in a man or a woman. You cannot put your life accomplishment and reward in a relationship. The best of man is man. Note that. The best of any human being is a human being. So you cannot do that. So lady, maybe you have misunderstood that uh, marriage is going to give you fulfillment. Marriage doesn't give fulfillment. God gives fulfillment. 
I'm sorry to bust the bubble of a lot of people. So if you're a single person looking forward to getting married, and as much as I encourage you to get married, but I want you to know ahead of time, marriage is hard work. And if you're not ready for the hard work, it is not a sin not to marry. You don't have to do it. Marriage is a place where God breaks us. Yes, you heard me breaks us how does it break us because you're going to have to live with an adult who is fully formed and then both of you would have to agree how can you agree it's going to be tough that marriage is a place where we practice submission daily what do i mean by that you have to keep aligning yourself with someone else's understanding belief system purpose structure so that the two of it can work together because amos 3 3 says can two work together except they agree so we don't see all these things all we see are the roses and the flowers and the bended knees and the outings and the honeymoon we don't see the responsibility that comes with it a young lady just got married and then boom two months after she was pregnant and then she said to me oh it's a good thing but only to realize that pregnancy meant money sickness vomiting shh, cravings and then the other one started getting irritated like oh why are you doing this maybe you should have waited i said waited for what you were doing it and you were saying waited <laughs> it is both of you that caused it both of you would have to adjust to the new reality so part of marriage is planning do you want to wait for a year before you have the babies so that you can mentally adjust. I know another lady that got pregnant on the week of their honeymoon. Got married in February and already had the baby by November. I mean, she hadn't gotten used to the man before the baby came in. And so struggled all through the first phase of the marriage. You know, they had not agreed on the chores in the home. You know, there are chores in the home. Who does what? Another thing is, is it a traditional marriage where the man brings the money and the woman brings the domestic responsibilities if that is a situation the woman may feel that i want to also bring in the money i'm tired of these domestic chores we need to understand that so i think it's important for all relationships especially young people getting married to sit down and say how do we want to run this home what do you think let's ask Buki. You are the youngest of us all, 32, 20, 10. So mine is going to be 32 still in December. So it's 31 plus. But you know, since everybody's putting the year, 1992, uh, 2024 is going to be 32. So let me be fancying 32. You know, what lesson would you want to teach an upcoming person? What would you want to say? Like we're saying, we're not condemning, we're not judging, and we're hoping that you're listening and you will not do anything that is not good don't don't commit suicide don't give up on yourself don't run away right can be quite rewarding even though it's a lot of task it can be quite rewarding i am in the state where i can say that you know when i'm going to see my children when it's my birthday they're all like calling themselves what should we do for mom what should we do for dad that is a beautiful stage you know they're thinking oh we want to buy this for you oh we want to pay your ticket to go somewhere it wasn't always like that it was tough initially so we're entering the reward stage and another stage is when you grow really really old when you are now 70 80 that's when you actually do need your children the most you know at that time the bible says they will take you where you don't even want to go so you need someone to take you somewhere because at that time you don't have the energy to do so Buki, tell us all right i think my advice to the lady right now is for her to take her time i think she probably needs to like retrace and begin to you know just write things down right because again she seems to be missing some kind of life that she used to have before mm. you know she seems like there's something that is missing in her life right now so what are the things do you want to be a dance instructor you don't what do you want to be in life before the kids start coming you know and it's a bit early now but i can understand that exactly very overwhelming stage that you are in right now so i stopped having made um, last month and it's not easy for me to start this new journey with my two kids, eight and five, but I'm willing to do it because it's a new face and I'm ready to embrace it. And so I had help. So if you don't have help, maybe if you need help, you know, to help you with some runs, I know, talk to your husband, see what you guys can do. Also, I want to help you, you know, with the kids and all that at home, you know, just write things down. 
what do you think you're lacking what would you like to do talk to your husband what can you do to get to that stage you know you want to learn something new you know talk to your husband about it see what you can do you need to get the kids to be in crutch all that there are actually solution and i think that what Mrs. Chris may also mention about also getting a community very important as well you're about to talk about it i think there's nothing you're not the son they say so so anyway. to label. Yeah, yeah, something like that so people have gone through that stage but it might seem very overwhelming for you you can still get help if you sit back and then see people that have gone through that stage and it can help you it, it will last forever all right so just relax you're overwhelmed right where it is you're bored yes think of something you can learn you want to be a youtube blogger you want to be think of what you want to do it's possible all right let god help you now i don't want you to just let that slide off you know what can you do practically she mentioned something is there something you've always wanted to do that you actually had to leave behind because of the urgency of the responsibility now i want to share something with you that can help you in life there are things that are urgent and there are things that are important a lot of times we jettison the important things for the urgent things let me give you a clear example if a phone rings now that is urgent but not all calls are important when your baby cries it's urgent but if you have studied the different signs of the cries you would know whether it's something you need to fly dive and carry or something you can actually leave then what are the things that are non-negotiable what are the things that you cannot abdicate to someone else to do the school runs you can't give someone else to do it eg school bus so that you can spend that 30 minutes to do something that is important to you or you can in a community like christy said you have two other parents you can share the school runs i take the children in the morning you bring them in the evening in the afternoon so you have one of the legs for yourself then what about washing clothes do you own a washing machine do you have someone that comes in to wash do you have someone that comes to help you cook once a week all these things you can work with someone so that you can create time for yourself so I'm following what Buki said about is there something that is important to you that you have dropped? I want you to identify that thing and write it down. Let me give you my example. When I wanted to start my PhD, that was when I decided that I was going to take a year break. And I took a year break, like, you know, deferred the process. And it was that same year I decided to go to the Bible school where I met my husband. So I always felt that I needed to do my PhD. After my second child, I decided to go back but it was a long time away from school so I applied for a second master's so I said let me use this master's to bring my brain back to school second week in the master's class, I was pregnant again for my third child I cried my head out I said ha ah, my life is spot my life is ruined these marriage will not let me progress will not let me do the things I want to do so I understand exactly what you're saying when you have set a plan for yourself you know but I had to go back to the rock that was higher than I am and that is what I'm calling you into go back to the rock that is higher than I am before I say the last word let me ask Christy what last word would you want to say to this woman before I say the last thing so I want to pick on one particular thing you complained about I'm tired of thinking of what to cook for him. Oh. <laughs> Cooking can be overrated. And I'll give you one advice. When I nearly got married, I'm from Akwaibom. I wanted to finish my husband with food. So I would do recipe one, recipe two. I just went on and on. And one day, and I blessed God for that one day. He said, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying this food mm -hmm. with different recipes. Mm -hmm. But please, I want to beg you. I think you should take it easy ah. because it will get to a point where i'll begin to demand it and you won't be able to do be able to do it so i think you should have some honest conversation on certain things especially the cooking because sometimes you think you want to hold the man the man just wants to have you the whole you Aww. so there are some honest conversations you need to have now you've exhaled which is good but have some honest conversations in certain areas and certain aspects and it will shock you that the man doesn't really need all that you could tell him look i would like to go to bed by nine o'clock but staying up by 2 11 really gets to me have those honest conversations and that could help you and some of the burdens you're carrying you discover you need not to carry but the man just feels you know my wife likes to do all those things he doesn't know that is weighing you down 
so some honest conversations could really help we have to really go now we have to go now because time is not really our friend so these are powerful guests i would have to keep them for next week so stay glued to family today with fumi johnson we'll continue this conversation same time next week family today with fumi johnson is powered by the capstone church with our walls.